Okay, so we're going to start the unit and topic on probability, and um, just to get some basic definitions down for ourselves at the start so we can work on the terms um, and use the terms appropriately, um, I'm going to look at defining a few of these things. But remember, in probability, we're going to be looking especially at the difference between experiment and theory, which is basically trying to compare what we think might happen in a perfect world, which is our theory, um, to what we think would happen in the real world, which is our experiment. So that idea that what we think might happen isn't always exactly what happens. So first definition for us is just an event. And this is just something that happens as an example if you're flipping a coin you get a head you get a heads heads is the event so that's what happened you got a head outcome. Um, this is basically all possible, not all possible, put it this way. An outcome <coughs> is a possible um, event in a situation. So again, flipping a coin An outcome could be heads or tails. Things that are possible to happen. Not what happened, but things that could possibly happen. A trial. <coughs> this is basically doing an experiment. Um, and here our examples could be the actual action of flipping the coin or rolling dice. So the trial is doing it, the outcome are the things that could possibly happen, and the event is what actually happened. Now our sample space, this is all possible outcomes. For instance, with flipping a coin, your sample space would be heads and tails, just two possible outcomes when you flip a coin. For rolling a die, rolling a dice, the sample space for a normal six-sided die, all the possible outcomes for us there is one, two, three, four, five, or six. Those are all the different sides on the six-sided dice that could come up, so it's every possible outcome for us. So experimental probability is what happens in the real world. This is what happens in the real world, and basically this is with randomness. That things are not always exactly as we expect them to be. And our formula for this one would be number of successes things we're looking for, divided by the number of trials that we attempted it. For instance, you know, flipping the coin ten times, I would have ten trials, and if I wanted to know the number of the probability of getting heads, I would look at how many of the heads I actually got during that time of the ten flips. And theoretical probability, this is in a perfect world where we have no randomness 
things are exactly as we expect. Um, and so our formula for this situation is basically the same thing, but just worded slightly differently. And this is number of outcomes. I guess we should say this number of events. So number of desired event divided by number of total possible outcomes. So here we're looking at the number of the desired event that we're looking for divided by the total number of possible outcomes. And probability basically always breaks down to this then. For both experimental and theoretical, it's basically just number of times what you wanted happen out of the total number of times that you have either that you were looking at it or the total that are possible. So again, it's kind of always just wanted out of total or desired out of total. And that will work for pretty much any situation. And expected value. Um, this is what we expect to have happen, which makes sense from the expected value, but this is basically if in a perfect world, what we would predict would happen. For example, if I was going to flip a coin a hundred times, I would expect to get 50 heads because I should get half heads, half tails. It's not always exactly as it works out. And our formula for this one, I'm just going to abbreviate it here because we'll talk about it later on as well, is just n times p. That's the number of trials. times the probability in P. And the last one we're going to look at here is long run frequency. And this is basically um, tracking how many times an event occurs during lots of trials. In other words, do something for a long time and see what happens. So the long run frequency is kind of what we what we do when we end up doing kind of experiments, and we'll just observe for a really long time. Um, for instance, rolling a dice a hundred times and just observe how many times a three comes up. And from there we can calculate a probability based on our experiment, based on the evidence that we've collected. So these are your definitions for your probability. And again, the key things to remember here is that the experimental probability this is what happens in the real world, which isn't always perfect, doesn't always work out just like you think it should. And theoretical, that is the perfect world. That is when things work out exactly as you think they should. So we'll look at comparing these and calculating with them and do some experiments as well.